Here I've drawn observer position of the spaceship as a function of observer time. Now assume I start at t equals to zero and the light signal is sent from a positive height. The spaceman at height x marked equals to zero will accelerate a little bit before receiving the signal, and since the spaceman now has a little velocity relative to the system as it was when the light was emitted, the signal will be blue shifted, the Doppler effect if you will. From the accelerated system it will appear like time is moving a little bit faster higher up uh, than where the spaceman is sitting. If he receives a signal from somewhere below him, it will be a little bit red shifted since he will gain a little velocity away from the signal before it catches up with him. While this will be described as ordinary red and blue shift by an outside observer, it will be described as gravitational blue and red shift by someone in the accelerated frame, as there is no way to separate acceleration and gravity. Now let's go further down the accelerating system. Note that the position starts as a parabola and then approaches the line c t minus c squared over g. This means that if I am at a distance c squared over g uh, below the spaceship when it starts accelerating, I will not be able to send any signals to it. The spaceship will be able to see what happened to me up to the moment of blast off, but as that event approaches, my moves will appear slower and slower, and the spaceship inhabitants will not be able to see what happens to me past that event, for as long as they keep up the acceleration. So a uniformly accelerating system has, ta-da, an event horizon. Even in this simple system, which has now been described using special relativity, we get a little general relativity craziness. Of course, this event horizon is an attribute experienced by the accelerating system, not by the person who is at the spaceship's event horizon. Next on the agenda is to see how the time on the spaceship is related to observer time. We can start with the differential equation and insert the expression for dt in the expression for time dilation. Time as observed by the spaceship, called the proper time tau, can be calculated by using the time dilation formula dt equal to d tau over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, which means that d tau is equal to dv over 1 minus v squared over c squared uh, times g, which we can integrate and get v equals to c times tangens hyperbolicus of gt divided by c. After one year proper time of acceleration, the spaceship will be moving at 78.2% of the speed of light relative to the observer. Remember that one year of observer time yielded 71.8%. After 10 years, the relative velocity will be 99.9999985%, which is more than was gained from a 100 year of acceleration observer time. As you can see, time will start to differ dramatically for the two systems. By equating the two formulas for velocity as a function of observer time and proper time, you can find this transformation formula for the times. You can then use this to find how much proper time is needed to travel 1000 light years. While well, by inverting x of t, you can find that you need 1001 observer years before the spaceship passes a star that far away. However, for the spaceman, only 7.3 years will have passed. Now many of you will shout out, I clearly lost it. Uh, this result would imply that the spaceship would be moving faster than the speed of light. Well, comparing observer distance and spaceship uh, Time is not meaningful. Apples and oranges. The whole concept of prolonged uniform acceleration is of course a little bit silly as a real world project. The energy required for accelerating only you for 18 years requires more energy than the Earth receives in 10 million years. Also you will have to make sure that nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, is in front of your path uh, when you start a uh, uniform acceleration as a grain of dust will eventually pack more energy than the largest nuclear bomb. Ordinary light will be lethal gamma radiation to you after a while. Also packing an unlimited amount of energy in a limited space will cause a gravitational collapse of the spaceship. Uh, thanks for uh, yesing though for pointing that out by the way. 
Receiving outside energy is the only uh, solution I can see, but uh, coming from in front that uh, energy will be lethal and from behind it will be hampered by the event horizon. The only solution I can see is that an infinite linear accelerator must be built, uh, completely devoid of uh, light and matter, not particularly realistic in other words. Okay, that's all the relativity weirdness I've got time for now. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it.